Brother, open us a prayer. I'm sorry. Father, thank you, Lord. Everybody, oh, Father, we thank you. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for uh, the people who rest everything to translate this book from Latin into the language of Nicosia. Lord God, um, we just pray that you'll speak to us. Um, and, um, Holy Spirit, we will give you uh, the true interpretation of the text. Amen. Okay, before we get into uh, any study and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to more today and to ask everybody that's present to give a testimony of what they have learned through the Bible studies or through the ministry uh, what have you learned in other words uh, what what good does it do if you go to a job and you work and you don't accomplish anything what good's a minister if he ministers and so forth and he doesn't accomplish anything people should always be growing somebody say amen, amen. So, uh, uh, <coughs> to start with being in there, what, what have you learned? In other words, uh, in other words, it's like uh, I said before, you come in to all she's really been ministering to her boss and different people. One reason people don't minister to somebody is because they don't know the Word of God. So when a call or somebody comes up to them, uh, they just back off or walk away. Because most cults uh, are well versed and most people that doesn't want to go to church they'll come off with so-called scriptures and say just like this lesbian says well uh, you don't have to go to church to become a believer well, where do you come back at them at and so forth or people say well you can't lose your salvation so where do you come back at them at but have we learned enough and, and like David said I've hid that word in my heart that I might not sin against you have it memorized God's word enough that when somebody says something I said whoa I've learned now through the years, you know, like, you know, you coming out here with all these eternal salvation, that shows me that she's got a lot of studying under her belt. And so forth. And I'm, and I'm so glad that we understand you're going to hook up with us. And somebody give the Lord a big hand. Yes, Lord, thank, you, Lord. Lord. thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How many of you know to have a, have a mighty army, mm -hmm. you've got to be powerful soldiers? Mm -hmm. Can I say that again? To have a mighty army, you've got to have powerful soldiers. You cannot go to war if you're weakling. You've got to be well trained. Mm -hmm. You've got to have your right armor, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the crafty, sly, cunning, trickery devices, at the will of the time away pleasantly, or doing nothing. So we have to have the Word of God in us. So uh, t tell us something that, that you've learned now. Um, first, um, that we are, that there's no. Uh, that the the pre-trib is not scriptural first, and uh, since we're dissecting the book of Revelation, um, and I know that as Christians we're not appointed to wrath. Um, I've learned of the wrath that God's going to pour out um, through His angels and and things. The wrath that He's going to pour out upon the unbelievers that are left here that will not uh, repent of their sins. Again, I, I just want to say that I'm, I'm so glad that as Christians, we're not appointed unto wrath, God's wrath. We're not appointed unto wrath, so we're not going to face the true wrath of God Almighty. And when she says that, always remember, we're, this is where we're going to be picking up here tonight, uh, according to what I can find, we're here at pre-trip. I'll show you tonight. And so we find horrible, horrible situations to clean up. And one-fourth mankind is dead before the sixth seal. The sixth seal is where uh, the great tribulation comes in. That is where the Bible lets us know, according to all my studies, Matthew 24 and different places in the Bible, including the Revelations uh, uh, chapter uh, 6. Uh, where uh, the great tribulation God has started. The Christians should be taken out of here by that time. That great tribulation, Jesus even speaks there in Matthew 24, he says, except, uh, except God uh, shortens the time, there should be no flesh saved, but for the very elect saved, he'll shorten it. So, it's got, so we know that 
basically two thirds of the whole earth is going to be destroyed, mankind, and, and the things here on earth. So, and so she says it's not pointing on to his wrath. That's that's his great wrath, the woes and the plagues and all this that. So, but always remember this. Never forget this verse. The Bible says, when it rains, it rains on the just and the what? Just. So if you walk outside right now, and we are presently having a horrible storm out here now, if you walk out here and you're a Holy Ghost filled person and you're living a holy life, and you walk outside in that, guess what? You're going to get wet. You know, uh, I'm not saying them might hit you, but you know it's possible. And how many of you know uh, there's a holy man of God coming home from Texas? And, it, and uh, uh, what, what was his name? Uh, uh, David Wilkerson? And he died a horrible death. Sorry, so, say amen. Sorry. so anyways, <laughs> once again, always remember it, when it rains, it rains on the just and the unjust. So to say, you know, we're not gonna nothing bad's gonna happen to us. That pre trip thing is so far from the truth of God. Uh, what have you learned through the years? Um, um, a lot of the same things that um, she said. <laughs> uh, well, Years ago, I was always taught pre-tribulation, you know, and I'm just uh, thankful to, um, you know, devour the book of Revelations more, and, you know, because it's good to have, uh, to have the teaching on it, you know, to see that, you, like you said, that you know where to go when someone has a question, yes. and that you can show them the answers, <laughs> you know, my, you know. Mm -hmm. So, it, always remember, it's so important, like the Bible says, study the Word. Rightly divine. Okay. A man called me years ago, he, he deer season, the guy worked for me. He said, uh, first first day of deer season, I come back to work the second day. He said, You shoot your buck? I said, Yep. He said, You hypocrite? I said, Watch your mouth, buddy. He said, Don't you ever preach to me no more? He said, You're a hypocrite. I said, Why am I a hypocrite? He said, The Bible says, Thou shalt not kill. You kill a deer. <laughs> And I had to talk about Jesus killing the Passover lamb and the fish and all this and that. So, but how many of you know some people are just stupid? Mm -hmm. But you've got to have scripture to prove to these people these things here. So, Brother Michael? Well, um, as far as learning uh, something, uh, I can't really say that I've learned anything new. But uh, what I can say, I've been inspired, you know, to be bold you know, as far as praying for people and trusting in. Uh, Trusting in God that when you lay hands on somebody and pray for their uh, sickness, they'll be they'll be made whole. Okay. And also, um, you know, and about, and about the prophetic, you know, uh, understanding that God still does talk. To, no, I mean, it's still. I mean, God does talk to you yes, all yes, the time. Yes. You know, and uh, used. Um, you know, there has to be a discernment, uh, whether that's you or whether that's the enemy or whether that's God. No, yeah. you, you hear what he said there. But God does speak, and it's so important to have that gift, that discernment. Mm -hmm. And you know, the Bible says, try this first rather than be a God. You, you know, that means the devil gets so close to the real thing mm -hmm. that unless you really know that you know, that you know, you're not going to know who it is speaking to you. And remember that woman I just told you about here a couple weeks ago, Didi and I stopped and so forth. And uh, we led her to the Lord over 30 some years ago, and she didn't go to church anymore for a year. God sells always on Sunday. She said, Jesus spoke to me and told me that I'm not supposed to go back to church anymore until He gives me release to go back to church. Mm -hmm. Now, how many of you know I did into her big time and told her that wasn't Jesus? How do, how do, somebody tell me, how, do, how can I say that? Because it contradicts the word. The word says not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together is the matter of some. It's one of the Ten Commandments. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and also, did not Jesus go as his custom was to commandment commandment mm -hmm. uh, Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Yeah. That has nothing to do with assembly. That's about rest. Mm -hmm. Well, no, no, it does. No, no it does. Uh, because, see, see that, that day is given unto the Lord. No, no work was done in that whole day. Was, was in, a, in the presence of God. When you go to other nations nowadays, so most nations still do this, but they all gather to the church, the sanctuary, and they stay there all day long. Mm. So whenever, whenever this was was time for the Sabbath, they gather to the tabernacle and so forth. 
it, it was not just for them to lay at home and rest. They knew they had to get in the synagogues and sanctuary and the tabernacle of God. So, so it, it's not just saying day of rest. And how, how many of you know that's why he gave the fivefold ministry? If everybody did not go to church, why would he give a pastor? Pastors to lead who? And I prophesied years ago the day's going to come that pastors will not be able to stand up in a church and be as a pastor because people won't come. But the revival is going to come, is going to be out there, and people that's anointed of God, signs and wonders are going to come. Didi? Well, the one thing I learned, I mean, 35 years of sitting under, sitting in churches and stuff, I never learned, Jim, to I said under you that we're not to just read the word, but to study it, take every word. And in the time that I've been here, I've learned for 35 years, believe free trip. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that anymore. Uh, about the Sabbath, you know, not to do my own thing. For years, I did my own thing because the churches was doing it, and I just believed everything that was said to me where I should have been looking into the Word of God and believing what God was saying to me, not man's teachings, because I didn't know the difference because of myself, because I didn't do what you're telling us, Jim, to do, that we are to study every word. Well, okay, let me and back up here. Don't say what Jim's telling us to do. What the Bible says to do. That's right. Ne never, never say, oh, I'm telling you what to do. Don't, don't, always remember, try to say, Bible says, God says, and all I'm telling you is what the Bible says, okay? Mm -hmm. Always consider yourself as even as a mailman. You're delivering the mail. So if people get mad at you, wants to punch them out, so be it. If they love on you, so be it. But preach the word. That's what Paul told Timothy. Preach the word. He is the in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort. In other words, reprove, I said, no, you're wrong. Rebuke, you're, you're chewing them out. He says, and exhort. I'm trying to help you. With what? Long suffering and the word. What, what is your doctrine? What is your doctrine? Sit right here. Well, we, our doctrine is the Sons of God, Church of God, uh, Baptist. No. Our doctrine is the word. So, whatever he says, this is what we're going to stick with. How many of you know if you stick with the word, you'll never get in trouble with the Lord? <laughs> but if you stick with the word, you're going to get in trouble with a lot of people. So I'm going to say amen. Go oh, ahead, yeah, sis. Well, I tell you, I was brought up and raised Baptist and um, taught pre trib. And um, once saved, always saved. And um, what happened was I started listening to this uh, preacher named Milton Green on the radio, and he used to irritate me like you wouldn't believe because he uh, knocked my once saved, always saved doctrine out of the water and <laughs> taught that are Christian. You saying, are you saying that he made you mad because he come against your doctrine? Not only that, he, there, there would be times where he would say, what's that rising up on the inside of you? Is that God? <laughs> <laughs> and, and anyway, but it was so much word, word, word. Now you gotta realize that not only was I brought up Baptist, I mean, I went to the Baptist uh, school and then I went to the Baptist Bible colleges, and I even debated with other people. I even debated with a senator's wife, taking the stance of once saved, always saved. So that was a stronghold, wow. a stronghold to me. And this man just kept having word, 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 word. Well, I knew what little bit of scriptures we Baptists stood on, and it wasn't any near the amount that he had, you know? And I kept listening to that, you know, um, uh, be, beware lest there be found in you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God and all these kind of scriptures, man, and I'm like, mm, mm, you know, and, and what happened was one day, um, I, I can remember Frank was getting his teeth done at the dentist office. I'm out in the car and I have my Bible open, right? And I said to God, I said, Lord, and I visualized myself taking off my religious glasses mm -hmm. and I said God I'm going to remove my religious gl glasses mm -hmm. and I want to pray because you said that you would lead us into all truth and I just want to know what is the truth and as soon as I prayed that prayer it was like um, you know like light bright you know where all the lights just light up like the uh, like the um, 
uh, night lights at it. You know, it was just like, boink. I saw it all through. I think I start with Hebrews, and you know, Hebrews is full of it in James, and I saw it everywhere. And I was like, oh my goodness. So then, with um, the the pre-trib doctrine, the Lord told me this. He said, the same thing that you did here, I want you to do with pre-trib. So when my boys were about 10 years old, so this would have been like maybe uh, 15 years ago or something, you know, like the Lord just told me, sit down with the boys, go through the New Testament, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> like the gospel accounts, like Matthew 24 and all the parallels, there's three of them, and um, study that with the boys, have them sit down and learn together. So I sat them, we pushed the Legos out of the way because I'm a Mary and not a Martha. We didn't pick them up. <laughs> and we shot the Legos out of the way and we sat down. We sat down Indian style with them and we went through that. And it was like God just started really teaching me the truth. And then he started teaching me about submission, man. And I mean, in my household, Mm -mm. I mean, it was the mother was boss, <laughs> and and the thing, I mean, the, the motto was "Ain't no man gonna tell me what to do," and that wasn't just, you know, like my mother here, hearing her say that, but it was like my grandmother, and it's like everybody was just like this, and then television. I mean, come on, you're brought up on Maud, you're brought up on Lucy. Matter of fact, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, "Why are you watching Lucy?" And I'm like, "What?" And he said, "She lies." She smokes, and she's disobedient to her husband. I was like, well, I guess she is, isn't she? <laughs> and God just started toasting me and teaching me. He'll teach you all well, truth. Well, why does the Bible say there in the Bible, I said, one of teachers, that then he turns around and says, but you need no man to teach you, the Lord to teach you all things. But there, there's things that you cannot expect to do and have a Sunday school teacher or a teacher teach you. You have to hear, have that ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord says unto you. And then he'll bring it past. And all that. She said about the Lord speaking to her by television. The Lord spoke to me, and you've heard me say this before. The Lord spoke to me a couple of years ago and said, Stop dabbling in witchcraft. Now that shocked me. <coughs> Stop dabbling in witchcraft. How am I dabbling in witchcraft? You, you, know, you know a story I used to really like? And, uh, uh, no, not Jeannie. Uh, uh, Star, Star, Star Trek. Trek. Star Trek. Star Trek. Yeah. Star Trek, mm -hmm. and, and you know, then uh, after I got got that on the system, I went home to tell a man so forth. So I, I remember the old days when my buddies and so so with that program called Mash. How many ever seen Mash? Mm -hmm. Trash. <laughs> I never, I never really understood why people like it. Just, just. Well, it's like nothing happened. There's a lot of veterans probably watching. Yeah. <laughs> if you've been in the military and, and seen some of the clowns that's in there and so forth, and Klinger trying to get out of the army and so forth, I can tell you a story about a guy trying to get out of the army and so forth, and, and he walked out in the hallway, and he was big, his name was Ed Tilly, and he said to me, he said, Humphrey, his girlfriend cheated on him, he's going to go home and kill kill the guy. He sent hand grenades on him through the mail, and he said, I'm going, we're in Germany. He said, I'm going home. I said, how are you going home? Well, you got to walk there. I ain't going to let you go. He said, you watch this. He said, I'm getting out of this man's army. And next day, the people come and said, did you hear about Gentile? I said, what? He said, he went crazy. I said, what? Yeah, he went crazy. He'd walk around the hallway and walk around the hallway and he'll stop and go, he knows. Oh, he knows. <laughs> oh, he knows. He knows. They sent him high cost and so forth, you know. And just called him crazy. So the day he's leaving, he's got his duffel bag and the bus is waiting outside, getting ready to take him to Birmingham with the army. He's got to put him on the ship. And he come down the by and he walked down the hallway. He knows! He knows! He walked alongside me with told you about his man's army. So, you, you know, when I watched MASH, you know, it was like, oh, but then the Lord dealt with me the same thing with you. Why are you watching that? Mm -hmm. Nothing about adulteries and cheating and all this and that and so forth. It's worse now than it was back then. <laughs> See and, what I'm saying? And Klinger, they designed him to promote the homosexuals because he, the thing was, everybody couldn't talk about him. They had to accept him the way he was. And there are so many shows that they had like back in the 70s. But you see, the thing with mm -hmm. Klinger, he wasn't, he wasn't homosexual. He wanted to get a, Discharge because he wanted to just get out of there and he hated it. Right. But, Sister Joe, what have you learned? 
intimacy to where when he speaks, you you clearly hear him because I'll tell you what, if you raising your children up, if you that's one of the very first things is teaching them how to hear what the Lord is saying. You got that down? I you, mean I mean agree. We better be able to hear his voice. I always remember what the Lord told me, he said, Tell my people I'm more anxious to talk to them than they are to me. Mm -hmm. But we've got to be careful. You gotta be in the spirit. You gotta have the word of God in you mm -hmm. to know whether it's him. Brother Michael, you you, you had a, something there that I've been reading that for so never you gonna hurt? Uh, oh <laughs> well, uh, well let that I was gonna say the same thing Jeremy said was like how important it is to have an intimate relationship with God, not just a relationship with God. You hear what Paul said, the intimate relationship no I want to tell you something. Well, I just said, I do not believe that a person is a true Christian, Christ like like Christ, should ever get sick. That no type of demonic spirits will have any power or control over you. As Jesus, if we're like Jesus, no devils had any power over him. He never got sick and so forth. Moses didn't get sick because he's in the glory of this night. But that tells me that I've got a long ways to go. Okay, my hand shakes at different times and so forth, you know. That tells me, as a reminder, I'm not where I should be. But how many of you know if I step back and say, well, that's as far as I go, then that becomes flatline, that becomes lukewarm, and now I'm going to split hell wide open. So this is why we have to seek his face. Somebody say amen. Amen. Not his blessings. My name is Jimmy. Jimmy, I want this, I want that, I want, I want, I want, I want. What, what did most, one of the most beautiful verses in the Bible, Exodus 33, 18, where Moses says to God, after he's seen all the glory and all these things that might shook at his presence, he said, I beseech thee, O God, show me thy glory. Okay, so we've got to get more to a place where we're not satisfied. We don't really know what it is to come into his presence. I've been in his presence before. I, I, I won't go through all that kind of stuff. But when you come into his presence, Time ceases to be. Time stops. And you do not praise him in those times. You worship him. So it's a completely different world. And I remember every time I started to come out of his presence, and I hear people just talking, an ordinary conversation, I go, oh. It was so grievous, so. I, I can't put it in words, just hearing people talking, ordinary talk. How many know flesh is an enemy of God? Mm -hmm. They that sin the flesh cannot please him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him. Didn't say praise, worship him in the spirit of truth. Jesus is the truth, the Holy Ghost. He said, and God seeketh us to worship him. Then he says, for the true worshiper. What kind of worshiper? True, true worshiper. So worship in the spirit and truth. God seeketh us to worship him. So we've got to get to a place where we get in him. But the only way you can worship him is to go into the Holy Holy. So we already established that we can enter into his gates with thanksgiving in his courts, the two different courses over like this, and be in the flesh. We can praise him, but we can't go into the Holy Holies. The bell is rent, so so not, not just the high priesthood that we could enter in. But how many people go through that? But to go in that, it got to be an intimate relationship. To all I said it though. An intimate. That's why he said, many will say to me that day, judgment day, Lord, Lord, one owns my life, controls my life, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in thy name, cast thy devils on thy name, did great and wonderful works on thy name, but then I'm going to pass you, I never depart from you, you work for iniquity. What do you mean, don't know? He said, I was never intimate with you. There's a lot of people who goes and does great works and preach and this and that and teach Sunday school and all these kinds of things and travel the nations and this and that, but never intimate. I have a he, different perspective. Say what now? I have a different uh, perspective of that. Well, go ahead and say it. We're, we're Bible study. Well, um, I believe that, um, I mean, I don't, uh, personally, I don't believe he's talking to people who were born again spirit-filled and spirit-filled because that would require some level of intimacy to do all this stuff. Well, okay. Instead, let, let, I... Let, let me stop you right here now, and then, then you can finish this here. First of all, you cannot cast out a devil devil can't cast out a devil. Jesus said that. They said we cast out devils. 
Remember it says the son of Stephen went after to cast out devils, and they could not. They made the devils mad, the devils beat them up. Okay? And did great mind who works on him and prophesied in that name. Now these other two, you don't have to say, well, you know, you can prophesy in his name and still be a false prophet. You can do great works and say that was God. But when it comes to cast out devils, Jesus makes it clear. The devil will not cast out. How does he body will not stand? So these people had to be saved or they could not cast out devils. But he said, either way, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. What was our iniquity? What was our sin? He said, I never knew you. And remember when you study that out, that word no, you're going to take you back to where Mary and Joseph was. And the Bible says that Joseph knew not Mary to the child Jesus was born. He was engaged to her, but he never had an intimate relationship with her. So this intimate relationship is more than sexual. It is so intimate. So you know, I understand what you're saying, but we have to really study this. So when you come to a verse like that, say, well, what was her sin? I mean, Jesus doesn't leave anything out. He said, I never knew you. What do you mean? Two of the letters. Neither hot nor cold, but lukewarm, warm and shy. The other letter, even though he did all these great things, the seven letters of the church which we already studied. He said, I was labored and it's not fainted for my name's sake and all these things. So he said, but nevertheless, I have something against thee. Thou hast left thy what? That's an intimate. What is the first and great commandment? And the second is likewise unto it, to love the neighbor as itself. Okay. So it all boils down to a love affair. Can, can, can we can we grasp this? That our heavenly home all depends on our love affair. But how can a man say he's love God or hate or don't care about a brother? He said he's a liar. So, so if we really love God, number one, we're going to do something. We won't keep our mouth shut. And we, this is why he says, "Be zealous." What's what's the word zealous mean? Eager. Eager. Everybody say fanatical. Fanatical. That's where you get the word fan. A fan is made fanatical. I'm a baseball fan. You know how they act? Football fans, all this kind of stuff, you know? Elvis fan, all these people. Fanatical. And that's how he wants us with him. Just so much in love with him, we're just... <sighs> well, um, well, the verses, uh, many people will say to me, I did this, this, and this. Well, uh, just because somebody says they've cast out demons doesn't mean they've actually done it. I mean, they, I mean uh, in the Catholic Church, you know, there's plenty of, they have a history of exorcisms, and uh, I don't believe that all those exorcisms actually involved... Uh, you know, the casting out of an evil spirit. Some people came to them and they didn't have evil spirits, and yet, uh, and yet people convinced themselves, yeah, we did that. And um, I, um, and you know, in, in voodoo religions, uh, there are voodoo priests who claim they've cast out demons, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let, let's go back to what you're saying about the Catholic people here. First of all, they use what is called holy water. Let her throw holy water, sprinkle holy water, and so on. Where's the Bible say, cast that devil at that? In my name. Is that what he says? These signs shall follow them that believe, in my name they shall cast out devils. What did the seven sons of Seba get the devil so worked up about? Even though they were not saved, that the devils acted up how that man and come against those seven and beat them up and strip them naked and run them out of town naked. Why did the devil get so mad? Remember what the devil said? What did the devil say to to, uh, to seven sons of Stephen? Jesus, what? And I know. But who are you, seven? But they had so much faith 
in the name of Jesus. They said, we adjure you by the name of Jesus, the one that Paul preaches. Well, that worked the devil's up. And I've said this before. Here, here people are not even saved to work the devil's up by just having faith in that name. And we're supposed to be Christians, and we don't can't work a devil up, and we're saying we're a Holy Ghost. Come, come on. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to Exodus, uh, you know the Catholic Church and so forth like that. There's so much cultism, so much falsehood in a Catholic Church that it is damnable. Okay, we could spend all night here on that. So he's right when you talk about all these other places and all these things and so forth. And, and uh, you, you can go to uh, these, I've been in many witchcraft countries and so forth like that, where they can walk right straight through the hot coals and so forth, lay down hot and things like that. But this is why Jesus talks about, in Matthew 24, that they should do signs and wonders. If it be possible, the very elect would be deceived. So this is how the Antichrist is going to come on with signs and wonders and so forth. And unless you've got the Holy Ghost and you're walking close to him, you'll say, that is God. Somebody say amen. So, what, what verse is here? Okay. Uh, this is uh, Zephaniah chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Um, yeah, well, like you were talking about in Jeremiah, about uh, impending judgment upon America. That's something uh, you know, we've been discussing Wednesday in yeah. my church. And uh, one, I don't know, one day I just felt inspired <coughs> to read Zephaniah. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, short book, yeah. doesn't take too long. And then I came across uh, the, this passage. And I saw it to be a, a passage of hope. Um, I'll read here King James. Um, are you all there? Uh, it says, Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger. So it repeats himself. Before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Verse 3. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be, sh it may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if you read Ezekiel, and I, I've already been all this study Ezekiel again, and, but all the way through Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and all these and Zephaniah, and so forth, what the prophets of God are doing, he, he, they're warning the people to get right with God. And re read that last part again. Now, I want you to listen to this here and, and, and see. If we repent, will God forgive us? Yes. Okay? We know that a lot of people, according to the book of Revelation, they're not going to repent. They refuse to repent. Read that one more time. Okay. This one what happens here. Um, the last part. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth. Seek ye the Lord, all ye what? All ye meek of the earth. Okay. Um, Speak up. Please. Which have wrought his judgment, seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Mm -hmm. Now, how many of you know that when God saves you, he wants us to walk holy? But if we don't walk holy, he'll spare us not. But if we seek him, he said, it may be that I might protect you, hide you. How, how many of you know Israel uh, was protected? even in Goshan, in the days of Egypt. But they were there when all the plagues and all the blood and all this stuff, stuff happened. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So God had them in a hiding place. He, even, even when they left Israel, another type of exodus of protection and so forth. By day, they had the cloud. By night, they had the fire. <laughs> it was to keep the enemy away from them. But how many of you know that that's a good example of how many of you know just because you're a God-fearing God man or a Christian does not mean you're not going to die for the Lord? Tell me any of the prophets that did not die for the Lord, from Isaiah. Well, it Lord. doesn't say it'll protect you from man's wrath. It says it'll protect you from his wrath. Yeah, exactly. That, that, yeah, that's what I'm getting. Yeah, you know, exactly, exactly. Judge the justice of God. So, so we have to remember that, that <coughs> even though we ask God, and this is before you walk in here, I was just saying about... Uh, 
God takes some godly men home in some horrible ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, we saw about like David Wilkerson. What a, what a horrible way you have to go in, in a horrible wreck like that. And I've seen so many other people, you know, die in horrible deaths. But the thing is, why would God allow somebody to die like that? Only God knows. But what I will not do, I will not go to God and say why, and I want to know or I debate. My God is a righteous God. Anything He does, can the devil kill a Christian? Can the not, devil? Not without God's permission, because of Job. When He came to Job. Jesus said, Job. "Jesus said I took the keys of what?" Death. Uh, Jesus said, "I took the keys of death." So he's got to, so you can't die unless the Lord allows you. All power is given unto me. Paul, or, yeah, Paul says, I live and move and have my very being in you, and I can't do nothing except through you. So God is all power. My wife, she says all the time, I don't understand everything, but one thing I do understand is my God's got everything in control. How many of you believe God's got everything in control? Uh, yes. Yes. Amen. Uh, what we want to do, we want to go back. Uh, to uh, Matthew 24, and then maybe we want to jump back uh, to Revelation uh, chapter 6. Matthew 24, and we want to start reading at verse 21. Now, I, I want, want to try to show you something here. We're talking, still talking about pre trip. Uh, does Jesus make a any kind of a statement about when the rapture is going to take place. Uh, I've heard people say, yeah, well, I he does. Yes. Matthew, Matthew 24, we're going to start at verse 21. And uh, we're, we're going to find he, out that... He talks about he talks about a gathering. <coughs> yeah. I, I, I apologize for that. Two, two gatherings. Yeah. He's going to talk about Matthew 24 about the rapture. He's also going to talk about, about the... the uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, and verse 31. The great white throne judgment. Yeah. yeah, which is what Paul calls, and you know, as as you pointed out, the Thessalonians, the gathering. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what the New King James says. I don't know what that means. Okay. Matthew 24, verse 21. Somebody read that for me. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not sought since the beginning of the world, to this time, nor ever shall be. Okay, now remember what, he's, what Jesus says here in this verse here. Uh, if you read the rest of Matthew 24, uh, where the disciples come to him and, and they said, Tell us, uh, what should be the sign of thy coming and, and uh, the end of the world and so forth like this. He goes through all these things, take heed to man, deceive you, and all this and that. But uh, th then, uh, let's, let's go up to verse 15. We might as well go to 15 right off the bat. Uh, somebody read verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Okay, now, please keep this in mind. Somebody tell me, when does the Antichrist come into the temple and sit down in the temple? What time? What time frame in the middle of the seven-year tribulation middle. period? Yes. The middle, the three and a half year period. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to mark, you can mark right there and say that is the three and a half year period that Jesus is speaking about. Now, has he talked about uh, his coming before that? No, he hasn't. Okay. So when we go back to uh, Revelations, we're going to find the same thing he's talking about: the sun and the moon and all this kind of stuff. That three and a half period in Revelation, and then it talks about together and together again in the three and a half years. Okay, now, uh, verse 21 we read, For there shall be great tribulation, this is three and a half years, such as not since the beginning of the world to, the time, to this time, nor shall ever be. Verse 22, somebody. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no, no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. I've heard people say, well, that's the only talking about the Jews. And some people say, well, it's all. It's, how many of you know there's neither male nor female, there's neither Jew, Greek, or free one. We're, we're the elect of God. Yeah. Somebody yeah. say amen. 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 So we, we know that according to the Bible here, according to Revelations, 
that almost two thirds of the whole earth is going to be destroyed, not only the earth itself, the water source, but mankind upon it. Okay, so it's going to be hellish. Uh, uh, verse uh, 23. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Okay, well, why would he say something like that? Because what's going to happen. Yeah, exactly, because <laughs> what happens in the middle of, of when the, uh, the six seals are open? We know the Antichrist is going to show up, and he's going to be like who? As who? Christ. So people are going to be running around saying, there's Jesus, there's Christ, there's Jesus, there's Christ. Okay. He said, don't believe it. Don't believe it. He's an antichrist. He's a false Christ. So we find out that he's not talking about the ra rapture yet. Is he? He hasn't said nothing about the rapture yet. Right? Okay. Uh, verse 24. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Okay, now he's talking about the tribulation period. He's talking about the Antichrist, the false prophet. Come on. Mm -hmm. I keep hearing the word elect in there. Huh? I keep hearing the word elect. Yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, he says, for there shall arise false Christ, the Antichrist, false prophets. We know the false prophets going to be there. And shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, that they should deceive the what? Like you just said, the very what? Yeah. How many of you know that's people that's not walking close to God and refuse to walk close to God? People that is not, I'm starting to get upset. People that is not walking close to God is going to be so easily deceived. People that believe once saved, always saved, and this and that, you can live in any, any way and so forth. And people that's living in sin and so forth. Did he read here out of Galatians 5 a while ago where Paul speaks and he talks to, names all the sins of the flesh. And he says, I told you before and tell you even again, they that do such things shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. People that are so strong in God and still living in sin, they're going to take it. Come on now. Yes. If the disciples of Jesus three and a half years mm -hmm. forsook him, they all forsook him. Not just Peter, they all forsook him. What makes us think for one minute that we're going to stay? Th this is serious. So once well, again... we know the end of the story. Peter didn't. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> but, but think of it. And, and here's another good one for the eternal salvation people. Jesus said, I've lost none except for this own petition. You, you can't lose something unless you had something. And they'll tell you, well, Peter is never saved. Mm -hmm. Brother Michael, what did Jesus say? I've lost none, except Jesus. 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 Mm -hmm. He gave them power to all. He was casting out devils too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come on now. Mm -hmm. That's right. And Saul, uh, King Saul, he prophesied you know, when the Spirit came down. So what, what we see here, we see the people that is not strong in God, intimate with Him, that really is, I mean, has a relationship with Him, He's not going to know. But people that's intimate with Him will gladly give up their life. Come on. Yes. I, I can say to, to 12, I can say to D, uh, all your mothers, would you give up your life for your son or your daughter? I mean, if a terrorist walked in here right now and had your son or daughter and they said, if you do not deny Jesus Christ, I'll cut his head off. Now, how hard is that going to be for you? But wouldn't you rather say, cut my head off? They say, well, I'm going to if you don't. But if you just had a natural choice, if somebody was just getting ready to shoot one of your kids, you, you jump, no, no questions about it, you jump right in there, right? Why? Because of the intimate relationship. You love them so much. 
of people that doesn't really know him or really love him, that just goes to church through a form of godliness, they're going to buckle so quick. Remember that uh, verse in Revelation, uh, but they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they loved not their life unto death. To death. Recite that again. Now let, let, listen to it. Now this proves that they was intimate with the Lord. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they loved not their life unto death. The testimony. What is our testimony? I'll overcome that devil by the blood of the Lamb. That's how we got wars. But my testimony is this. If that's what it takes, that's what it takes. How many of you have ever prayed to God? And for many, many years, I, I pray to God, and I say, God, do anything you want to with me, but please never take my life. Please don't. He gave her back to me back a number of years ago. But guess what I've been doing here lately? I say, God, whatever it takes. Now, how many of you know that's hard? That's hard. Now, you, you think for one minute that if somebody walk in here, and I love her so much, and she's been coughing and wheezing all that kind of stuff, you had to go get those, what do you call it? Prednisone. Prednisone, all that stuff. I watched her, not this Friday, but Friday before, choking to death. I mean, and she, she could not breathe. I mean, she could not even swallow her wings. And she jumped straight up and she walking around. Come on. Now, what's going to get her breath of air? Mm -hmm. Now, you tell me that I would not say, God, I'll give my life for you. Just let her breathe. See, without my wife, I don't care about nothing. The only reason I'm here on this earth is I love my God. I'll do anything he wants, but I love my wife. But if he took my wife from me, I'd say, my God, come quickly, Lord. And I said before, I'll, I'll disappear because I'm going to go to Israel. First, first thing I'm going to do is go to Israel. I've got to find, find where God spoke to me at my college. But I don't care. This is why you don't catch your life anything anymore. Paul said, you know, we're dead in Christ. See, so somebody that is really in love with him, so that way, you don't care. You don't care. But if you're fleshly, and you're caught up in your job and all the junk and so forth, because the Bible says they can either buy or sell, Buying or sell. I mean, that's all fleshly junk. Except they see, you see the name, the number, or the mark. I'm telling you, we're going to be here. But I'm going to tell you this, and I want to make this very clearly. There is a supernatural enemy that God is going to raise up. Mm -hmm. It's going to move in signs and wonders and miracles, yes, and the yes, devil yes. can't stop. Now, we had some, even in the New Testament, some of them was some of the disciples. John was one of them. They put him in a, a great big kettle of cooking oil and tried to cook him. And he wouldn't cook. So they said, well, you won't die that way. We, you know what you, we'll send you to Alpacas. They'll kill you there. And he went there and he converted the whole island. And then he receives the book of Revelations. He says in Revelation chapter, let's read it real quick here. Revelation chapter 1. This is what he says here. How many of you know every, everything in your life is already predestinated of God? Mm -hmm. yes. uh, verse 9, somebody. I knew thy works in tribulation and poverty, but no, thou... No, no. Revelation chapter 1, one verse 9. Oh, I, John, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation... And what? It, what's he in? In, in, what, what's in the tribulation. In other words, how, how many of you feel like you've been in tribulation? A little trouble with this. Anybody here? You got one. Two, three. Come on. Oh, it's okay. Two. He said, uh, in tribulation, go ahead. And in the kingdom, 
and patience of Jesus Christ. Anyway, patience. Everybody says, well, God, it takes a lot of patience to hang in there. Yes. Anybody? Yes. Oh, come on. <laughs> Sometimes you, you, come on. Go ahead. But in the aisle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay, let's back up here. He said, he's in the aisle that called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. How many of you know he said for, for? He said, I was put on the aisle of Patmos because of the word of God. How many of you know that's why he was put there? Mm -hmm. Then he says, and because of the testimony of Jesus Christ. How many of you know God said, you're going to the aisle of Patmos because you've been preaching, but you're going there really because so I can give you the book of Revelations. Come on. For the steps of a good man is ordered directed to God. For all things... To those who what? Are called, called according to his yeah. purpose. So nothing can come our way except he allows it. Everything. Everything. Someone, everybody say everything. Everything. The Bible says, how many want victory over this whole world? The Bible says, uh, victory over this world is even our faith. Then the Bible says, God will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon Jehovah, trust upon Jehovah forever. So if we want faith, right here it is. God's been showing me that verse a lot here this past week. Uh, it's 1 John 5, 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. See that? Mm -hmm. Victory over this world is, is what? Faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey. I, I've been losing deer right and left. I just had to call the agriculture department, a great big doe, one with real good does. And then her fawn just died yesterday. I got two more up her. Looks like they're going to go. I, I've been just, just losing right and left. And you know what I'm doing? Thank you, Lord. <sighs> Why? Why? For all things. Whether I understand it or not, whether I like it or not, whether I want it or not, how can he make us a mighty army, great soldiers, if we don't believe everything he says? You've got to believe every word. This is not this buffet out here. Well, I like some of that, but I don't like that. I'll take some of that, but I don't want that. <laughs> Every word is inspired of God. Let's go back to Matthew 24. Anybody have anything you want to say? Any statements? Always be free. Always just, just open up whatever. Verse 24 says, There shall rise false prices, false Christ, false prophets, shall show great signs and wonders in so much that, it, that if it is possible, that it should deceive the very elect. So we know without a shadow of a doubt that is in the middle of the tribulation period. We know that is. Somebody say amen. Amen. Question. Has Jesus talked about his coming yet? Nope. Everybody say no. Okay, verse 25. Behold, I have told you before. Okay, explain that verse. Such a simple little verse, but it's a powerful verse. What's it mean when he says behold? Huh? Look at this. Yeah, look at this. But but it's more than just take a glance at it. Everybody look up here. It, it, the word behold means basically standing in total awe. Almost total amazement. Behold. <coughs> this is one of the reasons I like that one verse about behold. Uh, yeah, the Lamb of God. So when the Bible talks about behold, he says, behold, I've told you. You better stand in total amazement. I've told you so. I told you this. Is these things going to happen? Yes. Why? Huh? There you go. He said, Behold, I told you so. You believe that's going to happen? I'm going to have a note. I don't believe it. I know it's going to happen. You, you know what I say to the Lord probably almost every day? I know without a shadow of a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt, 
that you are the true God and the Bible is real.